One thing that's important when we talk about graphs is to think about our intercepts. We have both x-intercepts and y-intercepts. X-intercepts are the points that cross the x-axis. What's super cool about an x-intercept is we know that its coordinates are always a number and zero. So if we are asked to find what is our x-intercept, we automatically know that y value should be zero, so it gives us a number to plug in. Likewise, with a y-intercept, it is a point that crosses the y-axis, so in this case, we know that the coordinates are always zero and a number. So we have to figure out what the value of y is, but we always know that our x value is zero. So if we're asked to find the y-intercept, we can plug in zero for x and solve. Looking at an example, given this following equation, y equals the absolute value of x minus 1, we want to find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Keep in mind that with the x-intercept, we know already that y has to equal 0, so we can plug in 0 for y and solve. With our y-intercept, we know that x equals 0, so we can plug in 0 and solve for y. Looking at my x-intercept solution, sure enough, I have said that y is equal to 0, so I've plugged that in, and then I'm going to solve, and I have the absolute value of x equals 1. And that actually creates two solutions, that x can equal 1 or that it can equal negative 1. When I look at my y-intercept and I plug in 0 for my x value, the absolute value of 0 is 0, and 0 minus 1 is the solution, negative 1. Now there are different intercept possibilities. You can have zero or any number of x and y intercepts. So you can have as many, you know, as I guess as many as the graph wants to have. Um, but it's also possible that you don't have any of a particular intercept. Whenever you solve and you get imaginary solutions, which include that letter i, this lets you know that one or both of the intercepts does not exist. So you see that I have a graph here, and this first one here, y equals x squared plus 1, does not have an x-intercept. So that means when I would be solving for the x-intercept, I would get an imaginary complex solution. Same thing with the second graph. This is the graph of a circle. It does not cross either of my axes, and therefore I do not have x or y-intercepts. So I would run into an error trying to solve this and get complex solutions. Hope that you found this video helpful. As always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask.